I've been testing Sora since it was launched. I was underwhelmed at first, but I've uncovered a lot of cool and surprising stuff while experimenting. There's a couple things it's way better at than any other tool. That's why I never rush to get a video out when a new product launches. I like to do a real deep dive first. First, a quick mention of pricing, which is pretty steep. The $20 a month gets you 50 generations at 480p, but I'm guessing most people will want to generate in at least 720p, which would get you 16 per month. That's not very much, but a lot of people already have ChatGPT Plus anyways, so when you think of it as the package deal that it is, it's actually just a bonus on top of something I was already paying for. The $200 per month, on the other hand, is very expensive. It does come with other perks in ChatGPT, like access to O1 Pro mode, but there are far less people that have any use for that. And I still used up the whole 10,000 credits on the first night, but you get unlimited credits in relaxed mode, which I found out is still pretty fast. I'll just do a quick overview of the basics so we can get to the more unique stuff. I like the UI and main page a lot where you can see recent and featured generations to get ideas and inspiration. Also to see what's been working for other people. You can open them up to see the full prompts they used and even remix them yourself. We've got the prompt box at the bottom. I'll start with a simple prompt, FPV shot, camera pushes through dense jungle foliage, revealing a majestic waterfall, lush greenery parts to frame the cascading water, mist rising. I'll send that, then while it's generating, we'll look back at these options. The plus button can upload an image to start from. They have some preset styles to choose from. I don't find them useful, but I'll demo them all later. The aspect ratio, you can choose the quality, 480, 720, and 1080p. Generation times vary based on what you choose. Then the video length goes up to 20 seconds and you can generate one two or four variations at a time. That goes down to two when you're on relaxed mode. Then the question mark will show you how many credits you'll use under your current settings. Then over on the right, we have storyboard where you can add subsequent prompts at different times to guide the generation more. Now I'll click the all videos tab to see all my generations and here's the result. That looks great. Definitely a solid generation, but that was a softball. I've had most video generators do really well with that prompt. I'll show an image to video now. I click the plus button, then upload my image, then I'll add a prompt. You can send it without one if you want to. Stellar's J looks side to side, then hops across branch. But that looks really good, although it didn't follow the prompt fully. To try to fix that, we can use the storyboard feature. It's got this long prompt it generated based off the image. That works to start. Then I'll click in a couple seconds to add a new prompt for it to hop across the branch. And I'll send that. That worked pretty well, but that was about as simple of an example as I could give. Storyboard is not good at anything even remotely complex, and even fails at simple ones like this a lot. I picked an image I knew would work well for this, but image to video is extremely inconsistent, probably the worst part of Sora. Some images will work well like this one, but others it will do a cut and then have a video that's just inspired off the image rather than extending it. That happens a lot and is very annoying. You can give it another attempt with the recut feature, but that doesn't fix it most of the time since it's usually such a quick jump. That's my take on image to video. It's not very good overall, but if you have two or more images to use, like a start and end frame or a frame in the middle, that works a lot more consistency without all the weird cuts. This is the only thing I've found storyboard useful for. First, a simple example with another bird. I used the editor in mid journey to remove the bird from the shot. Now I can upload the empty branch as a starting frame, then add in the image with the bird. Then I'll add another frame without it at the end. I could add prompts in between, probably not necessary in this case then that comes back with a lot more action in the shot. I've also found that Sora works really well if you're trying to make something weird. Like I just put in these two images to see what would happen. And another quick note is that content moderation is more strict with Sora. So here's some of the images it declined to animate. 
really quick, I wanna tell you about a tool I've been using a lot lately to help generate titles, thumbnails, and research viral video ideas. It's today's sponsor, Spotter Studio. This is my favorite YouTube ideation tool. It connects to your YouTube channel and helps brainstorm based off top performing videos on your channel, as well as outliers across all of YouTube. Type in a concept and it gives title ideas. Then you can rephrase, shorten, or I like this explode to take it in all sorts of different directions. You can do this similarly for the hook and for thumbnail ideation. I've uploaded my face so it uses that. Then I can make it more realistic or sketch based, then inform it from my own thumbnails or best practices on YouTube. Now I can base my thumbnail off one of these concepts. And my other favorite section I want to show is the outliers tab. I'll usually do channels my audience also watched or the list of favorite channels that I selected. It gives a rating of how well those videos are performing relative to that channel's average so you know what's overperforming and can let that inform your ideation process as well. There's a ton of stuff in here I could cover. It's made to be your home for all of your YouTube research and brainstorming sessions. If you sign up using my link down in the description, you'll get your first 60 days free. Also, if you're watching this before December 31st, they're giving away $25,000 to people starting free trials. And brainstorming and creating new projects give you additional chances to win. So you can use an amazing tool and also have the chance to win a lot of money. And regardless if you sign up before the 31st or not, you'll get two months for free using my link in the description. Now back to text to video, I'll let some of my best results play through. Overall, with text to video, Sora's generations are higher fidelity, but less consistent than other leading video generators. With Runway, Kling, Hilo, or Tencent, you'll get better results easier. But the times Sora nails it, it's the best of all of them. And as I've experimented, I've found that longer and more detailed prompts tend to work better. Not always, just a tendency. A quick way to add detail to your prompt is to ask ChatGPT to expand on them. Then you can edit it from there. Another thing is it can do text pretty well. I did this one I could use as a title screen for the channel. It spelled Futurepedia perfectly, probably 20% of the time, which isn't bad for a difficult word like that. So those are some good, mostly realistic generations. I also tested it out with a ton of different styles to see what it's able to do well. I'll save those examples for the presets section. Let's look at some of these other features first. I'll go left to right here, starting with recut, which I've already mentioned, but is very helpful. You can trim the beginning or end if something weird happened, or if it cuts to a new scene. You also can change the length. I'll switch this to 10 seconds. Now I can move the video around and it will extend into the gaps at the beginning and end. You can also cut and move around from the middle of a clip to regenerate the parts in between. Fixing errors like that is super helpful. I hope to see this in all the other video generators. The other way to use it is to build out a longer scene this way. The more actions you ask for in a prompt or with storyboarding, the more chances it has to get it wrong. I wanted a tiger eating ramen, but Sora couldn't get one to scoop up the ramen then also take a bite. So this one looked pretty good scooping some up. Then I used a recut to get the second action of it taking a bite and that worked well. An even more advanced one was having this dragon breathe fire to heat up her coffee, then for her to take a sip. That was way too much. So I started with the same technique from earlier where I got rid of the dragon, then used the two images so it would appear like it was landing on her shoulder. From there, I used a series of three recuts, one for each action, and ended up getting the whole sequence. It would be nice to be able to just type in a prompt and have it do everything perfect, but this is what we have to work with for now. Or there's another workaround I'll show in a second. It's using this next feature, Remix. With Remix, you can describe changes you want made to a video, plus a less obvious but very valuable use case. First, let's say I want this bird to change to a cardinal. Just type that in. Then depending on how big of a change, you can select strong, mild, subtle, or custom between those. The cardinal worked pretty well, so I'll try something more difficult. Replace the bird with a robot bird made of gears. And that worked awesome too. And I like this example I found a lot of this jellyfish and then they added googly eyes to it. That looks amazing. Now this works with videos you upload as well. So here's some stock footage of a man looking at suits, but I want him to be a zombie. And easy as that. 
Or maybe I want to give this cat some sunglasses. It works great for changes like that, but it starts to struggle with really big changes, like trying to add in a horde of zombies. I had to use the level above strong to get the zombies in, so it strays quite a bit from the original video. And it's the same thing when you try to switch to a different style. It can work all right, but it has to be all the way up with the strength at eight, so the composition doesn't look as similar to the original. And here's a couple I've seen on X that I thought were really solid examples. Too. My favorite use case for the remix feature is as a creative upscaler. I've been taking generations from other tools and remixing them with Sora. I've had some great results. It's like adding an additional render layer. For the tiger eating ramen, I actually wanted to do image to video, but it just cut to a new scene every time. So I took that image into Kling and it worked much better. Now I can bring that generation into Sora and run a remix over it. You can leave the prompt blank or prompt to reinforce the style you want, like cinematic or 3D animation. Then it will come back enhanced. I wasn't the only person to discover this. I've seen other people posting their results on X. Here's a few of those. This is such a useful way to use this. You can fix up a bunch of old AI videos, or like I mentioned, how image to video isn't very good in Sora. You could use image to video with like Kling or Runway, then bring that result in here to enhance it. And there's strong, mild, and subtle remix options and custom for numbers in between. So here's this owl at every one of them for a comparison. It stays really close at first and just looks better and better. Then it starts to change a lot. And the final one above strong adds huge changes, which you may or may not want. And I'll show some more comparisons because this is such a unique use case. So here's a man walking with a dragon I got from Minimax. That was a good scene, but pretty low fidelity, you know, not much detail in the face. And it looks pretty solid at most of these remix intensities. And here's a Viking charging from Kling that had some flickering. Again, it fixed it right up and looks amazing. I tried some more random stuff just to see what would happen. Here's a morphing video from Kriya. I didn't like how it looked at low intensities, but when I turned it up, it changed a lot. It looks really cool. Or here was an old frog rock music video I made with Pika Labs. When I turned it up, it looked awesome. I couldn't keep the consistency across clips though, because you can only input 10 seconds at a time. That's probably enough examples. I think this is actually an amazing feature. It's the best creative upscaler out right now. It's better than Runway or Korea's video to video for this specific use case. Runway's video to video can do bigger changes like switching styles and things like that though. But as the like magnific for video, this is awesome. Another one of my favorite features is Blend. It will transition between one video and another smooth and in a creative way. So I want to use this Stellar's J video and blend it with this Velociraptor video. There's different options. You can also customize the handles to make the transition longer and have more strength on either video. Here's the transition and it looks awesome. Here's another one using stock footage. This is a jellyfish, then a spaceship. And I want to see what happens when I blend those. The other feature is the loop. This can be pretty cool too. I've got a shot of a mountain biker that should be an easy loop. You can select how much time you want to give it based on how difficult it might be. Then submit that and here's the result. It's a perfect loop. How about this one I got from remixing the Korea video? That could be a cool loop. Yeah, that looks super cool. Now for presets, which are not very helpful. So I use this same prompt across each preset so you can see them as a comparison.
There's also this option to create a custom preset. If you get very good with your description, that could help not have to type it into the prompt each time, but the results aren't going to be as consistent as most people are looking for with a feature like this. And you can also upload an image to create a preset from. I tried one that was more out there. It creates a description based off the image to use rather than using the image itself. Then here's a generation with that preset not at all like the image. Now, just by prompting without using presets, I tried a ton of different styles to see what Sora is good at and where it struggles. I'm just gonna throw a song on and play through some of those. Do I think all of that is worth $200? Probably not for most people. Unless you have like consistent work coming in you would use it for. It could be useful to pay for a month if you have a big project coming up since it's unlimited, especially if you're combining it with another tool as a creative upscaler. Now, if you want to dive much deeper on how to make AI videos look more cinematic with prompting, shot types, and camera motion, I've got a full masterclass you can watch right here. And make sure to check out futurepedia.io to find the best AI tool for any use case, browse a curated list of AI tutorials, stay up to date with AI innovations, and sign up for the free newsletter. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.